Hi everybody, thank you for joining us in our lunchtime session today with the Live Lounge. So this af morning, afternoon, I don't know what to say, it's bang on 12, isn't it? So I'm joined by Sam Blythe and Jane Mays, both from SCT, who is one of our fabulous corporate sponsors. We need to make sure we recognise that, to be honest, because we wouldn't be able to do any of this without our sponsors. So thank you to SCT for constantly supporting our campaign. But we've got a short video to show you. It's about 15 minutes and it's a video that Sam and Jane have done where they discuss, just discuss compression wraps between them, really, how they work, why they work, different types. And then we'll have a little chat between ourselves afterwards and answer some questions. So we'll watch the video now and then we'll have a chat afterwards. All right, thanks. Today, Jane and I are going to give you a short introduction to compression wrap systems. First of all, Jane will investigate why your legs may have become swollen, and then I'll have a look at what compression actually does and highlight the differences between the different compression wraps on the market. We'll then look at top tips for applying um, the wraps and taking them off, as well as garment care and a couple of watch outs. Then I'm gonna hand back over to Jane to look at the importance um, of a holistic assessment. So Jane, over to you. Sam, thank you so much. Let's have a think now why we experience limb swelling. To be able to do that, we need to go back to understanding our circulatory system. As we're all aware, oxygenated blood travels with nutrients through the arterial blood supply pumped from the heart. It takes that blood to the lower limb, to our legs, and that oxygen and nutrients is delivered to the cells that need them. The deoxygenated blood passes across what we call technically the capillary bed and returns back up to the heart through our veins and is aided by the valves in our veins and the calf muscle. It returns back to the heart to go back to the lungs for more oxygen so that the whole system can start again. There's another system within our body, the lymphatic system, and what this does is I like to think of it as a mopping system within our body. What that does is all that excess fluid in the cell spaces in our lower legs, it mops it all up and ultimately transports it, filters it, and it returns back to the heart through the lymphatics. The problem that we've got when we've looked down and we've got lower limb swelling is that lymphatic system is overloaded, overworked. And that can happen for many, many reasons. It can be to do with your general health, your general well-being, diabetes, renal failure, underpinning disease, heart failure, heart impairment. It can also be compromised by our age. Sadly, we're all sort of getting older. However, you know, people are living longer, which is a benefit. And there's more people over the age of 85 and even 100. So this lymphatic system gets overworked, so it ends up where more patients are experiencing lower limb swelling. You're not alone out there, definitely. You may feel isolated with your limb swelling and swollen legs. However, there's so many other people out there with the same condition, and it's up there with the number of people that experience strokes. We all know somebody who's potentially had a stroke, but do we know other people that are sharing this condition with us? The condition itself, is lower limb swelling. You may hear professionals call it chronic edema. It means we've had this limb swelling for more than three months. And maybe the GP has given us some diuretic therapy that has not actually solved the problem. You also may hear that they uh, term lymphedema. And that really is just protein rich fluid in those um, cell spaces um, due to that overloaded mopping system. Sam, is there anything that we can really do to help patients with this condition? Well, thanks, Jane. And there's sort of three main elements that, that you can do as a patient to help support your own limb and clinicians can help you with. The first one is skin care, which Jane's going to cover later on um, because we know we need to keep our skin integrity. It's so important. The second one is exercise. Now, when I say exercise, I don't mean running off and uh, running a marathon or signing up to a gym. Something as simple as pointing your toes away from you and then bringing your toes up towards your nose. Um, the British Lymphology Society, or BLS, 
had a campaign earlier this year talking about everybody can. Everybody can do that little bit more. When you've got the kettle on to boil, you know, a couple of heel raises from the floor if you're able to, or just moving your legs while you're sitting down, dancing to your favorite music when it's on the radio, any little movement is going to really help improve those lymphatics and then get that, encourage that fluid back towards the heart. The third thing, which is where we're going to concentrate on is compression. So what does compression actually do? And to keep this simple, um, we're going to look at two main ways. The first way is it supports the veins. So as we were looking at the venous system earlier, we know that the veins take the deoxygenated blood back towards the heart and throughout the veins, we've got valves. Now there's no pump pumping this blood back towards the heart, but what we do have is the calf muscle pump and these valves opening and shutting. If we put compression on, what we sometimes achieve is these veins that have become distorted and enlarged, the veins don't work properly and there's still the backflow of blood. So by wearing compression, we're going to push these valves together to make, in essence, functioning valves. So we're going to support the veins. The second way that compression works is it helps encourage the drainage of fluid. So it increases the pressure within the tissue spaces of the legs that helps encourage fluids from those spaces into the lymphatic system and helps drain that lymph fluid. So within the compression, um, different types of garments that we have on the market, today we're looking at wrap systems. So historically, we treated both venous disease and chronic edema with bandages. And these can be two layers, three layer or four layer bandages. But bandages can become bulky. We all know it. We've all seen people in the street have got a relative with bandaged legs. Applying a bandage is often time consuming. If you look at, um, if you're a patient yourself or you have patients with bandages, if you look at the way they walk, we don't have a natural gait pattern. We tend to shuffle. And the other thing with bandages is once they've done their job and move some of that fluid, they can then slip. Um, we've all seen patients, or you may have experienced yourself, bandages sitting around the ankle and not really doing the job they should be doing further up the limb. And just to put that into perspective, there was a study done in 2007 that looked at the pressure exerted by bandages. And within two hours of having that limb bandaged, between 25 and 50% of that pressure had dropped, which is fantastic because it shows that the bandages have done their work. But from a negative point of view, it means those bandages will then slip and they won't be as effective. And this is where the wrap systems come in. Um, they're basically a system that mimics bandages, but allows you as the patient or the clinician or carers to tighten those wraps as they do their job and they become loose. So at present, there's two different styles of wraps in the market. We've got our interlocking styles where you have one strap with the next strap on top. And then we have our overlapping um, wraps where you tend to find the mimic bandaging by this 50% overlap. So for the interlocking wraps, they tend to be lightweight, slightly thinner material, although not always. So please have a look at the wrap that you're, um, or really evaluate the wrap that you want to use before using it. So because they're lighter weight um, and tend to be thinner material, they tend to be used for the leg shaped legs without much swelling, a lot of venous disease. With the overlapping wraps, they tend to be slightly thicker because they're overlapping and the material itself tends to be thicker. And this is because they are designed for your edema. And what that does is by having the slightly thicker material and the overlapping straps, it gives the wrap a rigidity. It makes the wrap quite stiff. And it's that resistance to movement that's going to help squeeze the fluid up through the leg, it, through your lymphatic system. As well as the leg wraps, um, you also need to consider the different types of liners that the wraps come with. Some liners just go from the ankle to the knee. Um, some have an integrated foot piece, so to stop any swelling in the foot itself. Um, some systems come with foot socks, and as well as that, you can actually get wraps for the foot itself. And these are all decisions that you need to make um, in conjunction with your clinician because deciding on which garment to use, 
there is going to be a clinical need, but there's going to be a need for you to have the best quality of life as possible. So it might be clinically, we need a foot piece, which is slightly bulkier, but you're unable to get your footwear on with it, or you have difficulty with your footwear. So it might be to allow you to go to work or about your daily business, that you discuss this with your clinician and you look at a wrap system that has either a built-in compression to the liner or an individual sock. And then when you come home at night, you might then want to replace that liner with an ordinary liner with an actual wrap foot piece itself. So this is a joint decision between yourself and the clinician. And I think to make sure that you're happy with your garment and for the clinicians to make sure that, that you can support your patients as much as possible, this joint decision is really, really important. A couple of little top tips regarding washing and drying. The first one is always, always, always read the instructions that are on your individual garments. Generally speaking, a lot of the garments can go in a delicate wash in the washing machine and they can go in a very light, a very cool drying cycle, but not all. So you must, must read the drying instructions. What I will say a couple of definite don't do's is don't wring your garment out aggressively because you could damage the fabric and don't pop the garment onto direct heat because that direct heat will damage the fabric of the garment and you might not be getting the level of compression that your clinician thinks you're getting. And finally, a couple of watch outs, just be careful. When you've got the liner underneath the garment, just make sure you don't have any wrinkles. Make sure it's nice and smooth because we don't want to cause any pressure damage. As I say, the skin is really important and Jane's gonna talk about that in a minute. Make sure with the interlocking garments, that the garment is actually sitting flush and we don't have any areas where skin can protrude because we could end up with, again, swelling coming through, we could end up with some pressure damage. And on the other side of that, with your overlapping garments, where you have maybe a foot piece and a leg piece overlapping themselves, make sure that those straps where you might have two garments, one on top of the other, aren't pulled too tight. What we don't want is a tourniquet effect you might want to loosen those straps just a little bit. Okay, so we've gone through the different wrap systems on the market. We've covered a little bit about why you would uh, use compression. Jane, would you like to go through a little bit about the holistic assessment? Absolutely, Sam. Thank you so much for that. That's so interesting. And, you know, as uh, nurses, we're really here to help you get the best care that you can for your lower limb swelling. And to do that, we use a best practice statement in chronic edema. And it's not just about the garments and compression, it's about the bigger picture. You really do need to get a full assessment from a healthcare professional. We will explore the story behind your edema. It's about understanding when it started, looking at your general health and your general well-being, looking at the medications that you're taking, understanding when it started, what caused it, what was the onset, but most importantly, how it's actually affecting you, how it's impacting on your quality of life and your psychosocial health. We'll also go on to explore sort of the skin, um, the skin condition within your, uh, that's underpinning your condition. We need to explore good skin care and we also need to make sure that we get you to work with us in maintaining good skin integrity. And that's quite simple. It's all about washing your leg, drying your leg, and using an emollient that suits you to maintain its integrity. We'll also go on to explore the site, size, and shape of your edema. So is it just below the knee or is it above the knee? In which case you need a full assessment for not just compression garments for below the knee, for the full leg. So this assessment is in partnership with you and we can't stress enough the need to go and work with us to get this in-depth assessment. So when we're thinking now about that assessment process, it is all about working in partnership, but probably the most important part is being able to get you to live well over time and manage your condition with support yourself. And we talk a lot about supported self-care and the importance of that. It's really important that we get you to live well over time. Don't you agree, Sam? I think that's a fantastic idea, Jane. And I think it's something we should all be striving for. So 
I hope you've all enjoyed this session on getting to grips with compression wraps. And hopefully we've been able to show you um, how compression wraps can help you live your best life. So what I'd like to do now is open this up for questions. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Um, so, Jane, one thing I was thinking about when I was watching that is um, the idea is for people to be independent, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, definitely. Uh, support self-care is definitely what we want to achieve. I think it's sort of really understanding what your goal is. Don't you agree, Kate? It's, it's sort of yeah. like what our goal as nurses is might not be the goal for that particular person out there. It's so true because uh, there's a lady I'm thinking of in particular. Um, we were bandaging her legs um, and the shape was much better. And then we were planning wraps and moving into wraps. And from day one, as soon as I mentioned a wrap and showed her what, some examples, in my head, I was thinking about measuring the leg. Is it getting smaller? Is it getting better? And in her head, she's thinking, how am I going to manage this? Yeah. How am I going to? She hadn't even been delivered the wraps yet. We were on completely different thought trains. I was all about the leg and how it was getting smaller. And isn't it brilliant? And she's thinking, oh, what, what am I going to do? And just to add an extra level of complexity, this lady's really, um, well, she's registered blind. She's got very little vision. So working with her to get her independent, it, it's still quite difficult, to be honest. Absolutely. And I think, you know, just that tip from Sam there, I know you're, you're here, Sam, with us to sort of explore that getting on, getting shoes on. We've all been there where, you know, we want to get this nice pair of shoes on. We want to go out in decent footwear. We, we know ourselves and we know our patients want to. And I liked your tip in the video about switching. Um, yeah. yeah. And interestingly, we've had a question about footwear as well. And this really comes to this joint decision making. Um, we would say that the integrated, like the hybrid liners, the integrated socks are for very lightweight compression. So for your mild edema, whereas if you have a small, um, if the top of your foot is more swollen, you might then need the foot piece itself because that is a bit more robust. We were talking about the stiffness of the garment. So it might be that you need that stiffer fabric for your foot to help encourage that fluid to drain. But like I was saying in the video, it might be to allow you to go about your daily business that you could get away with one of the, the um, hybrid liners or the foot socks when you're wearing good quality shoes. And in that, I mean shoes that cover most of your foot, like a lace-up leather shoe or a trainer. Ballet pumps, I'm afraid, are a no-go because you can swell over the top. We've all seen them. Um, so it's it's about living your best quality of life, isn't it? And and using the garments to really help you with your um, sort of self-care and getting about your daily life. Absolutely. And I know we sort of like explored some of the tips, some of the tips. I know we're talking, Kate, we've both shared this, where the Velcro bits, don't they? They definitely need to be folded back. I've had, yes. had me a ball of spaghetti before. I know, you know, yeah. Well, we've all pulled them out of drawers and it's yeah. big and you have to try and unravel it all and get it all ready. But yeah, little tips like that is so helpful. I'm just looking at some great questions. So um, one of the questions here is, so can we recommend wraps for patients with leg ulceration first line? I think at the moment, um, there's anecdotal evidence. The evidence isn't strong, but they're looking at the Venus Six trial for the clinicians on here is ongoing at the moment, looking at that very topic. If we apply the same theory, that wraps can be used um, alongside bandages or as an alternative to bandages to support self-care, then yes, there are wraps on the market that are specifically designed to deliver that magic 40 millimetres of mercury, if you have a lovely leg-shaped leg, um, to actually heal leg ulcers. So there are some on the market that is designed specifically for that. Um, but this is where understanding your the type of garment that you're going to use and why you're going to use it, because, again, there's a lot of leg ulcers out there that do have edema behind it. So this is about what James was talking about earlier, a holistic assessment from the clinical team. Yeah, that really excites me, Kate, though, because, you know, as a nurse myself, we want inpatients to self-manage and support them in doing that. And, you know, yes, there's a wound there. 
but we can support with uh, applying the dressings, you know, giving them the correct management plan to manage the wound and the edema. So that's great, isn't it? That, you know, it is really, yeah, it's brilliant. Um, someone's asked here again, so traditionally um, in the world of leg ulcers or venous leg ulcers specifically, um, patients would have traditionally been in compression bandages and then when they were healed, they'd step, go down into compression hosiery. So is that a similar pattern that you'd expect with wraps or would could a patient stay in the wrap as preventative care or what are your thoughts on that? I think this would come, again, it's that joint decision making because I think initially you would tend to use wraps to uh, for these swollen limbs to reduce the size of the limb rather than ordering various different sizes of hosiery as the limb comes down in size or to heal the ulcer because if you try to pull hosiery or over a large wound with a large dressing, you might dislodge it. So hosiery kits, I know we're not really talking about those today, but they have their place as well. They're fantastic. And we do have some evidence out there for hosiery kits. But with wraps, initially, you would use them for that decongestion phase, that reducing the limb. But that's not to say that you couldn't use them for the maintenance phase. We would normally, as clinicians, step patients down to hosiery because it's um, it looks a bit more natural than a wrap. The, the wraps themselves can look a bit like sports supports. I know a lot of uh, my male patients quite like them because it doesn't look like a, a stocking per se, which is quite a feminine title, but it looks yeah. like something sporty. So yes, you can use wraps for the maintenance phase, um, but you would have that discussion with your patient and you may well find that it comes down to what is best for the patient and what they're going to find easier to get on and off. In a nutshell, yeah, it's about what suits them, really. Absolutely, you know, effective compression that suits their lifestyle. And if somebody wants to stay in a wrap as prevention, great. But if they much prefer to go into a stocking, also great. As long as they've got compression that they like, that's comfortable, and that they'll actually wear, we're winning. Absolutely, <laughs> and we've always said, have we, Kate? Don't change what's working, haven't we? Oh. So if you're happy in your wrap and it's working. Stay with it, do you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Don't <laughs> yeah. go changing things just for the sake of it. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Let me have a little look. Oh, we've had a comment here from a gentleman. Wonderful to hear holistic assessment in capitals. You really mean that. Michael. <laughs> That's great. I'm diagnosed for limb lymphedema. I have multifaceted health conditions, e.g. E sciatica, after spinal surgery, sleep disorders, on two crutches. My mission statement or hope is for collaborate. Sorry, I can't say it. collaboration across health professionals for my holistic health and well-being. Thank you for the clarity of your explanations. Oh, Michael, that's all our mission. Um, Absolutely, I'd like to jump in that. Okay, I think the best practice statement helps us, doesn't it? Do you know, ask questions because yes. that's all about that, isn't it? it? You know, it's guiding our practice and looks at it holistically, bringing everybody in who can offer support to that. A particular patient in person so yeah, yeah uh, we've moved a long way haven't we we have we have we're, we're, things are improving it's really really good um some more questions here for you so how many reps should a patient be given again that would depend on the patient needs um being scottish <laughs> and living up to that stereotype I, I would go by if they just need the one wrap and they can have lots of liners that you, you can wash the liners underneath because all wraps should have liners twofold. They sort of protect the skin from direct contact with the liner and they also help keep, keep the wrap up. Some patients might need more than one wrap. Um, if you have a patient with lymphorrhea, as it's proper term, leaky legs is another term that gets batted about, probably quite a common phrase in the community you might need two wraps because you might need to wash the wrap as well. Um, so again, I think this is going to be patient dependent on what you're aiming for. Mm. If you're just needing to compress the leg for a week, would you choose a wrap or would you bandage? But then if your patient is going to be using wraps long-term for maintenance, then it maybe is better to invest in a couple of wraps just to see them through that, that, um, that part of the treatment process. So, Again, I think this is, Jane, what you were talking about, that, that joint decision-making with the clinician here is really, really important. And there is no right or wrong answer, I would say. 
Absolutely. Mm. To- totally agree with that. You know, it's all about what you're trying to achieve together, isn't it, in partnership. Um, ultimately, it's about looking at sort of what the products are, are out there that meets the needs. We want, as Kate would always say, we want you out there to love your legs and love your compression, don't we? I'm pinching your phrases now, Kate. <laughs> Pinch away, my dear. Pinch away. Um, there's somebody else has asked a question here. If they're wearing wraps to control a de- leg edema or my edema, didn't specify that. Like, how long will I need to use these for? Well, there's a question. I, I'll, I'll, I'll go first and I'll let you, uh, <laughs> Jane and Kate, you can chip in as well. I would say, you know, depending on what your condition is, if it's a chronic edema, this is a lifelong condition. So it's going to depend on your actual condition. Some patients, we can reduce the swelling, the size of your leg with wraps and then pop you in long-term hosiery. Sometimes we might need to keep you in wraps. Sometimes we might need a slightly thicker hosiery because your legs um, are prone to re-swelling. We call it rebound edema, but it basically means your legs go to swell again. So that this is a very difficult question to answer. And it's one, again, that would need to be on a case-by-case basis. Again, Kate, I see you nodding. Have you yeah. got experience of that? It's, <laughs> some patients will need to wear them. As Sam said, this is a chronic condition. The wrap doesn't fix the cause of the edema. It just manages the edema. So how you manage it as a long-term condition is kind of up to you, but you need to work with your clinician. So I've had patients who um, the wraps are best for getting their edema down, um, but then they might wear um, a compression, some compression hosiery for a few weeks, but they know that if they say go shopping or if they go to a wedding or just normal life stuff, as they're living their lives, if they're particularly busy weeks or busy weekends, they know they need to go back into the wrap because they've been on their feet a lot, they've been busy and they can feel their leg is changing. So it's about you as patients or individuals learning about your own legs and knowing when you need to up the ante with the compression. So you might, I've got a few patients now that have got so good at this that um, we just leave them to it. They know when they need a bit more, they know when they, when they can get away with just wearing the stocking, so it's about learning about your legs and how they respond to the different treatments. But um, yeah, you will need something to control your edema for lifelong. It's just what works best for you. Really. Would you agree? Absolutely. I think for me, it's about if you had another chronic condition, diabetes, you wouldn't just stop taking your medication, would you? So it's trying to get into that mindset, isn't it? That like you've just absolutely said, it's a chronic condition. It's going to lead long, lifelong management. And yeah. that's compression. And if that was a tablet, you wouldn't just stop taking it. So it's sort of getting that into our mindsets, isn't it? To continue. Yeah. To and it's getting to the stage where you as an individual know more about your legs than the clinician. That's what yeah. you know your legs. You know how they'll respond to certain things. So really, you'd be telling the clinician in the long run, I need more wraps because X, Y, Z. So you Absolutely. become the expert in your own leg care. I think for me, sorry, jumping in, sorry, sorry, Sam, but I think also it's about, I know I've heard colleagues say, you know, we don't necessarily get it right the first time, do we? Because legs are very yeah. unusual. And, you know, don't ever give up on compression just because you've had a bad experience the first time. Or it's about working together, isn't it, to get your compression right, the right system. And um, getting so you can live your life and wraps allow you to do that because you've got that independence. But yeah, it's about working in partnership and so yeah, and I think as clinicians, we we're only human. So if we see a wrap, a certain kind of wrap works so well on two or three people, then we're obviously gonna favour it because we're human and we think, oh, that was good. I'll give that to somebody else. But um that's not how it works. Yeah. You might yeah. give that same wrap to somebody and it's not as successful. And that's fine. You just need to try something else. So for the clinicians, it's so important to have an understanding of what is available like on, from different manufacturers. Um, but like you said, Jane, from the patient, just to understand that just because you've tried one thing don't mean that's it. There's so much choice. Yeah, the- and on that... 
on that same note, just an example of a time that I've had a bit of a fail as a clinician. Um, you know, wraps aren't suitable for everybody. You know, we're not saying, you know, get rid of bandages. It's all about wraps. It's got to be about good patient selection and the patient is right for the wrap and the right wraps right for the patient. And yeah. I remember popping wraps on a lady um, and we had actually had to go from toe to thigh. I know Jane touched on looking above the knee as well. Um, to encourage that lymphatic fluid to drain and she we made sure she could get them on we made sure she could take them off and she was really good and um, she managed it and we thought we're on to a winner here because bandages were bulky and she was a bit unsafe on her feet with bandages and we popped back in two days later and she had the velcro from one leg attached to the other leg and oh. vice versa and you just think Do you know that was my mistake because I should have come back a day earlier and just double checked. So uh, to sort of, to, to quantify what you're saying, as clinicians, we do make mistakes. Sometimes we don't always get it right, but yeah. sometimes we do have to just test to see what compression garment might be right, what might not be right. And I think my advice to patients out there is always be honest with clinicians because we, we can get quite passionate about what we do. And we can go, the way that we word things can be, that, that'll be okay, won't it? The way that we word things. And you might feel a bit embarrassed to say, well, actually, I'm not quite happy with this. Uh, and what I would say is always speak up because if you don't feel 100% convinced or you don't think it's going to work for you, please tell your clinician. It's back to that partnership again, isn't it? Yeah. Back to that, doesn't it? Absolutely. Is there any more in the chat? Because I've got loads of things to chat about. If not, oh, go on. Is... That's no surprise for you. <laughs> I know. I was just about to say. <laughs> it's, it is that skincare. We can't say it enough, can we? And, you know, being able to deliver daily skincare to your own legs is so important, isn't it? You know, yeah. technologies like this allow you to do that, don't they? I know we've had conversations before. What's the best emollients? It's the ones that you use, isn't it? And, you know, those sort of things that within your leg you can then take that wrap off do that washing and drying I don't know whether skincare it's your passion anyway Kate isn't it you I know the thing with the emollients is people do always ask you that don't they which is yeah, the best. and there isn't a best one um the best one is the one that you like and will you yeah. um I've seen so many patients with tubs and tubs and tubs of emollient and when you ask them they go oh I'm not having that on it's not, they just don't like it, but there's so many others that they could try. So the best emollients is the one that you'll actually use regularly. Um, yeah, there's no particular brand. We always have to be cautious around smoking, obviously. Yeah. So any paraffin-based emollients, which is an awful lot of them, um, of course, you wouldn't be applying them on people who are smokers because of the virus. But um, other than that, it's about choice and what you like and use. So yeah, I know, thinking about these sort of technologies and the wraps, the thought of just not being having access to put your moisturisers on yeah. through bandaging, myself, just that just makes me think. So at least with the wraps, you're able to take that off, moisturise, well, wash, dry, moisturise your leg on a daily basis, and skincare is so important, isn't it? So Yeah. So if thinking about the skincare, have you got any... And then, of course, the application of the wraps. Have you got any tips about putting them on and off? Any top tips? <laughs> I, again, when you're talking about washing and drying the linen, this goes for all compression. You really want to make sure you dry thoroughly. And I'm talking about any skin folds that you have between the toes. And then, um, like you've been saying, a, a sort of good quality emollient. But you need to make sure that that dries before you put the garment on because... What can happen is one, the garment can stick to the emollient, making it harder to get on. And you could end up with wrinkles, especially in the liner. Um, and that's one thing we want to avoid, is any wrinkles in the liner. Um, it, because what we don't want to do is cause any changes of pressure of that pressure gradient. And in theory, you could create some pressure damage without trying to sort of scare the audience here. But we need to make sure when we put that liner on, that we make sure it's nice and flat. And then with the wraps themselves, I think we touched on it earlier, make sure that you fold that Velcro back on itself before you put the wrap on. Because I, I think we've all been there, done that, where you end up with a Velcro attached to another strap, to the other leg, possibly to your tights. If you're in, you know, as a clinician, it attaches itself to everything. 
So fold those straps back on themselves on an individual basis. And then depending on which wrap system you're using, with interlocking wraps, I tend to pick up two straps at a time. Um, and as I pick them up, I'll pop down one and I won't let go of this top one until I pick up this next one and then I'll pop that one down. And the reason that I do it in that order is because we all have a stronger arm, a left and, or your right arm tends to be stronger. So if you just pull two and then the next two, <laughs> when you take the garment off, you might actually find that one side you've got a bit more indentation where you pulled it a bit stronger with your, your leading arm. Um, so again, That's just a good one. Feel, feel the resistance in both of them, pop it down, then pick up the next one, pop this one down and then the top and work your way up. Unlike anything, and where I'm supporting clinicians with measuring, even using a measuring tape, we can get all fingers and thumbs. And it's the same, especially for clinicians, when you're trying to demonstrate to a patient <laughs> to put these on, that you can come across that, that you're, you're making a mountain out of a molehill. So what I would suggest is to clinicians, find out whichever wrap system you use, speak to your local um, rep and get them to give you a sample and get used to putting them on and on, on and off your own leg and your colleagues, because we want to become as clinicians, we want to become, or for it to look as easy as it possibly can to our patients, because we want to work with our patients. And I'm sure if you're on here today as a patient and you see one of the clinicians struggling, it might put you off putting the garment on in the first place. Yeah. So I, I love your sort of comment, you know, sort of about that whole, you know, can I over compress, Kay? How many times do patients ask us that, yeah. you know, with, with these technologies? Can I over put too much compression on? And I know, Sam, you you detail well about some of the wraps there. You don't have that worry, do you? I'll let you take that one. Yeah. And, and again, this would come down to the individual wrap system that you're using. There's so many on the market. Some of them have built in pressure systems where you can pull um, the, the further you pull the strap, the, the wider apart two lines become that are on the straps and you use that there's a little pressure gauge that comes with it. Um, there's more and more of those coming onto the market now. Other wrap systems, when you read the instructions, they say pull to full stretch or pull to resistance. So depending on the instructions for your individual wrap, you must follow those individual instructions because in theory, you really could overstretch a garment. But again, without going into the intricacies of that, um, sort of depending on your leg shape, it becomes more important with the sort of slimmer legs rather than the really swollen legs. But I can't really emphasize this enough. If you are going to use a compression wrap system, compression wrap system, please, please, please make sure that you are aware of the instructions. That's so important. And that's for the clinician and the patients. And I think a little bit about that instructions again is that is the washing. I know you touched on it in the video, but you know, tumble dryers, oh crikey, they yeah. cause some havoc, can't they? Yeah, and velcro back on itself and pop it in a, a pillowcase because I've done it. I'm sure Jane, you have as well. I remember you telling me. Yeah, you take it out the, the tumble dryer and it spaghetti. you have socks, <laughs> it's spaghetti, it's wrapped up in itself. So turn those velcro straps back on itself, pop it inside a pillowcase, but again read the individual manufacturer's instructions for whether you can wash it in the washing machine and whether you can tumble dry it. Definitely. So could um, clinicians so, show samples so patients can see what they're signing up to or, or agreeing to try? So they can see, touch the fabric, see how thick it is or what they look like. So I think... I'm showing people pictures, isn't it? To really yeah. explain what it is. They're very, they're very tactile, the wraps as well. Um, you yeah. know, there's a different feeling of a different fabric. So 100%, uh, depending on which wrap systems you have on your formulary or you have access to, get the, the industry in to support you and get samples from them or even bring them around and see if you can get a bit of the fabric, if not a full garment, because th this is for the clinicians as well as the patients. If the clinicians don't haven't come across those and don't know how they feel and how easy they are to put on and take off, how can you then portray that to your patient accurately? So mm. to be able to get full samples to then take to your patients to show them the difference. If, when you see a wrap in a brochure, it can look a bit strange, you know, all these different wraps, what's going on, you know, the straps on it. But when you see them and you see it in place, and it's, it, it's like a glimmer of hope you can see in your patient's eye that your patients that have had those big bulky bandages on like I said, that have that shuffling gait, that aren't using a calf muscle pump 
properly, which we know is fundamental encouraging that fluid to drain because their foot's bandaged, to then show them this a wrap system that tends to be a lot slimmer fit that they can have either say a built-in compression sock or they can have a foot piece that still allows them to use the ankle the way it should do, but able to get footwear on. So it's that hope. And that's what gets me out of bed in, in the morning is that patient that has that glimmer of hope that didn't yesterday. And I say that's, that's where these wraps I think come in and they're so important. Absolutely. Kate, I'd love to look at the picture, you know, so where we have the above the knee wrap and below knee. And I would really sort of encourage people out there to say, if you've got a below knee wrap with loads of edema in your knee and in your thigh, we've all been there as nurses, that full assessment needs to take into account the whole leg, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. And that was something that came up um, when we were putting together the like patient things that patients have said to us when we're doing our uh, doc document for legs matter, um, which is available on the website. Um, <laughs> but um, patients say things like nobody really looked above the knee. Yeah, that was one of the one of the things that surprised us. So our, all this attention going into um, below the knee, but not yeah. the knee. Yeah. Absolutely. It's, the leg goes on, doesn't it? It's not just below the knee. And I know historically we've been focusing there. We need to think above above that knee and into the thigh because that in itself will achieve comfort, won't it? And when we think of that network of lymphatic vessels, it's got to, you know, it's not got to just stop at the knee. It's got to move that fluid right up back through the whole lymphatics, hasn't it? So I'm sure there's people on our call now that are sat there with just a great compression below but a big bulgy knee and thigh. So we would say, we get out there, get that assessment, reassessment. Yeah. Push, push for the thigh. Brilliant. Um, I think we've got to all the questions. But, um, is there any golden nugget of information you'd want to give to a patient? You can have one each. So start with you, Jane. Well, was there a golden nugget of advice that you'd give to a patient who's considering a wrap, a compression? I, I would say speak to your clinician. It's this joint partnership. Speak to them about it. See if you can get the samples and make that decision together. But make sure it's going to suit your quality of life as well, because it, we're all about giving patients more independence. And it's that quality of life, that, that glimmer of hope that they can get back to a bit more normality that, that's so important. Brilliant. Thanks, Sam. Jane? Absolutely. I think that it's out there. There's compression out there for you. And if you are watching this and you're not in compression, get that assessment. And I've got to close it with your comment. Love your legs. Okay? We want everybody to love their legs. Yes. Love their compression. Yeah. Love your compression, whatever kind of compression it is. Just love it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I've pinched your last gold nugget. It's all right. I'll let you have that. Thank you so much, both of you. And thank you to ICT again for all their support of the campaign. It's invaluable. But um, lovely, I think we'll close it there. Thanks ever so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye.